Hi guys, welcome to another video. This time I'm going to show you a roll of Ektachrome 100 that I shot in my Leica M6. And I developed this roll in some new chemicals, the Tetanol E6 Magic Box chemicals. It was the first time that I used this particular kit. I've used Tetanol chemicals before, but not this small version of it. In the last video I showed you my 1000th roll of film that I shot in my Mamiya and on the same day I also took my Leica with me as a backup in case something goes wrong with the Mamiya pictures because I'm very used to things going wrong when I go to that particular place. It's uh, some cliffs that are near here and I've spoken about it in the other video already and well if you haven't seen that video yet you can watch it up here I think probably up here. So if you haven't seen that yet, you can watch it. And there you already saw some slide film pictures and I have wanted to show you the rest of them in this video because the footage was getting a bit long for the last video. So here's another video from the same amazing place that we went to last time. I enjoy that place always a lot when we go there and there's so many nice scenic views and I'm always having lots of fun taking pictures there. So it's also unsurprising that I took two cameras on that particular trip. And then after I finished the roll of Ectochrome, I also shot the roll of HP5+. Plus. That's my favorite emulsion, so I always have lots of it at home and take a roll with me whenever I can. But yeah, before I bore you any more with these technical details, let's just get into the point of view footage.
Apa tuh? <laughs> Yoga talk. Yoga talk. This? Oh yes, like this. Oh yes. Oh yes. Thank you. <laughs> Take a photo of my phone. <laughs> yes, he was posing. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> it this was actually the last footage i had from before the pandemic i was trying to hold on to this footage for a long time now it's been almost a year but i finally run out it was bound to happen at some point right after this trip i actually had to self-isolate because the first cases of coronavirus appeared in europe and yeah, I'm risk group, so I have to be careful. That also meant that I actually needed the gloves that we had at home for developing film for other things, and it postponed developing quite a bit. And then, once we finally got our hands on some more gloves, I couldn't get my hands on E6 chemicals. My regular pack that I normally buy is a one liter kit, and it just wasn't available anymore. So I had to try something new. And this was this one roll E6 kit from Tetanol. I already pushed it by developing two rolls in it. And I think from what I've seen with these first two rolls, I think you can push it to develop four rolls, but that's already risky business. And I didn't really have any rolls that I would want to sacrifice like that. Most of the E6 rolls I have left are from trips and I wouldn't want to experiment this much with them. I have some E6 film in the freezer and I could shoot some more test rolls but I just couldn't go outside at the time and well that made it so that I only developed two rolls in this without pushing it to its limit what I would have done normally. I would have developed more rolls in it. Mixing it was a lot less of a mess than it is normally with E6 chemicals. Color chemicals are very smelly and also if you spill them that's gonna make some serious stains. So you gotta be careful with that. But with these little glass bottles that were in this pack it was actually harder to spill so that was pretty alright. I thought it was quite good for mixing.
all in all, I'm happy with the results and the colors turned out as I would have expected. I always develop my rolls in a Jobo rotary processor and that means I can keep the temperatures stable without a problem. So I, I thought that the results were as I would have expected from a Tetanol kit. Definitely worth trying this one if you can't get hold of the big kit or if you want to try developing slide film for the very first time, then this is also a good kit to try out because you're not going to buy chemicals for 30 rolls just to try it out and then realize that you can't keep the temperature stable and so on. I think you can also use these chemicals in a sink. I've developed color film in a sink before. Uh, this was negative film and not slide film. A slide film needs a bit more temperature control than negative film, so it's probably bound to be a bit more difficult in the sink, but it should work out still if you're careful. But the best thing is probably to get some form of temperature control, like one of these sous vide cookers. Is that how it's pronounced? I have no idea. It, it basically looks like one of those aquarium heaters and it's for cooking stuff. And a lot of people use them for developing color film. A Jovo rotary processor is of course the best option, but they are also very expensive. I got mine very cheaply second hand and that was a super bargain. You're probably not going to be able to find one of them at my price point from back six years ago when film photography was still less popular. And this is probably the only reason why I could afford to get a Jobo. Right now, if the Jobo processor broke and I couldn't fix it, I would probably get one of these sous vide cookers and be done with that. It should work just fine. The only downside of this particular kit is that all the instructions on German. Normally the tetanol chemicals always come with English instructions too, but in this case for some reason there weren't any. Very strange, but for me it obviously wasn't a problem I speak German, but it might be a problem if you don't speak it. But apart from that, I thought it was a quite good idea, because sometimes you just want to shoot one roll and not have to wait, I don't know, half a year to collect enough rolls to develop that with a kit of 15 rolls, 20 rolls, 30 rolls, whatever you manage to get where you are. And especially since Setanol discontinued their 1 liter kit, this is probably a good option for me, especially if I manage to develop maybe 4 rolls with this. I haven't tried it yet, but next time I'm gonna get one of these small kits, I'm definitely gonna push it a bit more. Do let me know what you thought about the colors that I could get with these E6 chemicals and with this roll of Ectochrome. It's actually as blue as I would expect from Fujifilm. That surprised me a little. I haven't used any Ectochrome before, also not the old version. If I don't know whether it was the same or whether it's something new now. All I know is that I was quite surprised that it was as blue as Fuji is. Normally a Fuji is a bit magenta, bluish, whereas Kodak tends to be a bit more yellowish in the color nuances that it has. But in this case the Ektachrome was just as blue and I tried to color correct the scans to match what I saw in the slides. This is of course also dependent on the development process. There are some people who say that the temperature might have a slight role to play in it, but I don't know the details yet and I haven't really found a proper guide yet where it's described in that much detail. If you know how to do that and how to correct for color cast in slide film development, leave me a comment in the comment section because I'm not so clear on that. I'm just used to Fuji coming out a bit more bluish and I don't mind it. It actually looks quite nice, but I don't know whether this can be corrected or not. If you know, leave me a comment in the comment section and next time I talk about slide film I will include it. Although I have to say I quite like this blueness of the Fuji slide film and also this ectachrome. I, I quite enjoy it, the, the kind of vibe it gives. I thought it fit the pictures of the cliffs quite well. So I'm just gonna say I did it on purpose if it's not meant to be like that. <laughs> That's usually how I deal with such things. <laughs> so that was it. 
my last footage from before the pandemic. What am I going to do now? But fear not, there will be more point of view videos coming in the future. I already pre-filmed some stuff after the first lockdown and I'm sure I'm going to get out a bit more soon too. It's at the moment a bit of a problem because the cases are very high and in this region they don't do any lockdowns anymore so we risk group people just have to make do apparently this whole situation is kind of bound to get on your nerves but never mind i will try to make these videos happen anyway even though they're trying to make it as difficult as possible in any case if you enjoyed this video then please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps out my channel, so I would appreciate it. You can also support me on Ko-fi if you want to support what I do on this channel. You can definitely expect more videos like this one. I already have some stuff pre-filmed that you're probably gonna like if you enjoyed this video. So if you're into that sort of thing, stick around. I would be happy to have you here. But yeah, I hope I see you soon for another video. Bye. There's a train, I think, up there. I think up there. I don't know. Probably up there. And that's my favorite emulsion, so I... Shut up. After this trip, I actually had to self-isolate because I... All of this shit happened, okay. Nice haunted house.